In this video, we're going to talk about Infrastructure as a Service, or IaaS. Infrastructure as a Service is a cloud computing definition terminology that talks about how do I, as a IT service provider, whether it's an internal service provider, an IT organization, or a service provider, or a public cloud provider, whoever is the provider of IT services, be able to deliver um, IT infrastructure on demand so that developers, lines of business, end users, whoever that might be, can basically layer on whatever development environment and whatever applications they want onto this infrastructure. And I can deliver that infrastructure in a way that is going to be dynamic, that's going to support multiple types of applications, that potentially supports multi-tenancy, which ultimately means I, I can have multiple lines of business that may not want to see each other, or multiple customers that may have, you know, not want each other to know that they're on the same set of services. But ultimately, being able to deliver uh, the unit of measure, which is basically typically thought of as like a server, or in many cases, a virtual machine or a virtual server. And so let's talk about what's under the covers of infrastructure as a service and how it differs from some of the other types of as a service applications. Okay. So the foundational piece for infrastructure as a service, right? So let's just start with infrastructure, is what are those pieces that are within the infrastructure that we're going to deliver? Okay. Well, underneath the covers, below the surface in essence, are the hardware building blocks that are going to make up infrastructure as a service. Okay. This is the network that's going to interconnect all of the resources. Okay. We're going to have servers. And it doesn't matter if these are rack mount servers or blade servers or micro form factor servers. It's just any server. Okay. In most cases, when we talk about cloud computing, we're talking about x86 servers. But in theory, you could also have Unix-based, RISC-based servers as well. Um, and it could be a combination. It could be a mix of uh, bare metal types of servers, where you're actually delivering the operating system on top of a, a bare metal server, CPU. Or in some cases, it's going to be a virtualized server, or what's typically called a virtual machine or a VM, where there's a layer of virtualization software uh, between the hardware and the application itself, or the hardware and the operating system itself. So I've got servers. I'm going to, in many cases, have uh, storage area networks or network attached storage. So I'll just call that storage. Um, and that, that includes both uh, locally uh, attached storage within a server, but in most cases it's a SAN or a NAS environment uh, with a whole bunch of different protocols that can be used for that storage, whether it's block-based protocols or file-based protocols. And then I'm going to have what I'll call layer four through seven services. Layer four through seven services. And these are uh, load balancers, firewalls, intrusion detection, all the things that are above the network, sort of layer two and layer three of the network, um, that are going to help uh, protect these services, uh, speed up the performance of these services, make sure that they're not being attacked for various security reasons. And then what we do is, like I said, uh, and I'll talk about this in the sense of virtualization, um, just because that's the most frequently used environment when we talk about infrastructure as a service. It's not the only one, but it's the most frequently used. So then we tend to have a layer of virtualization, server virtualization, and the types of vendors that you're going to be familiar with when we talk about virtualization are going to be companies like VMware, Citrix with their Zen product line, uh, Microsoft with their Hyper-V product line, uh, Red Hat with their KVM product line. Some of those are open source, some of those are closed source, some of them have open APIs to be able to integrate with, others have lesser APIs or no APIs. Um, but that layer of virtualization that allows you to run multiple instances of a server or an operating system on top of one physical server. Okay? But the ultimate goal of infrastructure as a service right, is to be able to deliver all this infrastructure underlying a virtual machine. Right? And again, we're talking about you know, a server instance, but I'll just call it a virtual machine just to keep things simple because we'll, we'll add on this in later conversations. So if you are a end user, line of business, somebody who is looking to consume infrastructure as a service, right? I A A S, what you're looking for is somebody to deliver you a virtual machine, a server, a place to put your operating system, 
whether that's Windows or Linux or potentially, I guess, Unix, as we talked about this, if this was a risk environment, and your application. You want to be able to put your application on there. And again, we talked about this application might be one that just requires one virtual machine or one server, or it could be you know, a cluster of virtual machines that you need. You need a whole bunch of resources to be able to support what you're trying to do. So you want the virtual machine, that's the base piece of currency that you want with infrastructure as a service, and you want connectivity to all of these underlying layers. You want the network, you want the physical servers, you want to be able to specify how much is within your servers, so you want to be able to know, you want to be able to specify how many CPUs, how big a virtual CPU you're going to get, how much memory is going to be allocated to those virtual machines. You'd like to know how much bandwidth you can allocate to that virtual machine. You may want to have some number of subnets or some number of IP addresses that are going to be required to make your application work right. And then you may also want you know, load balancing services, you may want firewall services, whatever those might be. But that's what you're ultimately trying to consume when you're looking for infrastructure as a service. So who might want infrastructure as a service? Why would I want to be able to deliver infrastructure as a service, right, as a IT service provider, as opposed to software as a service or platform as a service? Well, it could be for a number of reasons. The first is you may have legacy applications that simply are looking for an operating system and to put their application on top of that, right? So any traditional client server type of application, this is a great model for legacy types of applications, um, an environment where you don't want to rewrite the application, you just want the resources and you want them on demand, okay? That's the most common example. Uh, a line of business function might be you want to stand up some servers to run SharePoint for collaboration. You may want to uh, set up a, a, some servers to be able to run um, analytics or crunch some numbers for some sort of uh, data mining for you know a new business decision. You might be a development organization that says, um, I'm going to be making changes to my operating system and my applications all the time. I just want to be able to quickly get new servers, more servers, give the servers back. So you're really just looking for, again, this baseline infrastructure, stopping at the virtual machine, stopping at the server, that delivers all this on demand. Okay? And you want to be able to say, well, as I need to grow this, as I need more virtual machines or less virtual machines, I dynamically want the underlying infrastructure, the physical servers, physical storage, those layer four through seven servers, and the, and the network connectivity to grow or to shrink as needed. You may want more, you'll pay for more, you want to use the, utilize those resources, you may need less. You don't want to pay for as much. You don't want to just have the resources be wasted. So that's the core building blocks of infrastructure as a service. Being able to ultimately, on demand, be able to deliver your business user, your consumer of that IT resource, a virtual machine, and the underlying network resource below that. Now, how we go about doing that, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Virtualization is a core tenant of this. It allows us to dynamically add resources on top of servers. Uh, beyond that, we see different technologies within the storage that's going to help us do this on an on-demand basis to leverage sharing of resources better. So we're beginning to see more convergence in the storage layers where the data traffic and the storage traffic is converging around protocols and around infrastructure. We're seeing dynamicness in our layer four through seven services. So you're seeing them as both hardware resources and in many cases software resources. So virtual server appliances or virtual server resources where this used to be a physical box, maybe now it's a resource that resides on a server and it looks just like a virtual machine. It can be easily attached to a vir another virtual machine to provide security or attached to lots of virtual machines for load balancing. And then on top of that, the network is evolving. The network is being able to uh, be provisioned dynamically, be unprovisioned dynamically, um, to be able to say I can add bandwidth, I can add subnets, and so forth. So core to infrastructure as a service is being able to deliver all of these things on demand for my end users, and then they, they can take care of managing the application, the OS, patching, all of those things uh, above and beyond what I do for other application services for IT. So that's infrastructure as a service in a nutshell. We'll talk about more details of some of the technologies that are delivering that, but virtualization is a core technology for that. 
being able to do this uh, over more of a converged infrastructure, so I'm utilizing my resources efficiently, is a core piece of this. And it's important to think that the use cases for app infrastructure as a service tend to stop where the end user, the business user, simply says, I want the infrastructure resources. I will manage the OS and the application layers above that. Thanks, and thanks for listening.